Hey, what is up guys? So I have got some book recommendations for you today and I am doing these in the middle of the summer. So for those of you who want to get ahead before the school semester starts, you'll have at least a month and a half, right Martin? About two months maybe? So I've got 10 books. Why am I holding up two fingers? That's not 10. 10 books that I think every student should read, starting with my favorite book from last year, which is Deep Work by Cal Newport. This book is at the top of my list because it tackles the number one problem that I get emails, tweets, and comments about, which is I can't focus. I can't uh, stop procrastinating. I can't get into the flow of my work. And this is something that I struggle with just as much as most students. And I think this book really helped to point out the fact that when we get these cravings for novelty, cravings to check our Snapchat or our Instagram, or just distract ourselves from our work and we act on them, we're actually ingraining a habit and we're weakening that focus muscle in our heads. And by contrast, contrast, by avoiding those distractions and by sticking with our work, we actually become more able to focus. And when that was explicitly stated to me, I took it more seriously and I found it really, really helpful in my work. Book number two on my list is A Mind for Numbers by Barbara Oakley. Now this is the learning how to learn book. In fact, there's a course over on Coursera.org that you can take for free called Learning How to Learn and it's created by the same person and this book is basically the companion to it. And even though the subtitle here is How to Excel at Math and Science, this really is a book about general learning skills. Now this book has a lot to offer, so I can't really summarize the whole thing here, but a couple of the key lessons I took away from the book were number one, the process of memory formation, how bits become chunks, which are essentially loosely grouped bundles of information that are connected through meaning. And it talks about how to efficiently form those chunks. And it also talks about the difference between the focused mode of thinking and the diffused mode of thinking. Now these are two complementary forms of thinking. The focused mode is what happens when you sit down and you focus on a problem with intensity. And you're mainly using your prefrontal cortex when you do this. But the diffused mode of thinking is just as important and it uses a lot more of your brain. And it's kind of what happens when you background process a problem by taking a break or sleeping on it. And a good example is if you ever try to think of a word and it's on the tip of your tongue, but you just can't get it. And then you take a break or you go for a walk or you wake up from a nap later and it comes to you. So these two modes of thinking help you to solve problems in a complementary way. And this book highlights the importance of taking breaks so you can use that diffused mode just as much as the focused mode. Third book on my list is Getting from College to Career by Lindsay Pollock. And I think this is a great introduction to a lot of the career skills that you're gonna need to be able to get a job or the job that you want after you graduate from college. Now, I was gonna put So Good They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport at this spot in the list, but I've already talked about that book in the past. And while that talks about that big overarching passion hypothesis question, you know, what do I do with my life? This book really gets into the details and into the trenches of how to get a job and how to stand out amongst the competition. It talks about interviewing, how to build a resume, how to build your online web presence, all the skills you need to learn to be able to get that job that you want. Fourth book on the list, some of you definitely guessed that it would be on here, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. And yes, I've talked about this book before, but I really think that you should give it a read if you haven't done so already. And the reason for that is that habits form so much of our behavior. And when you know how to intelligently build strong ones and break the ones that you don't wanna have or that are hurting you, then you're gonna be so much more successful and you're not gonna be wasting as much of your limited willpower on the things you wanna get done. Book number five on my list is Spark, The Revolutionary New Science of Exercise and the Brain by Dr. John Rady. And I'm recommending this book for two different reasons. Number one, it is a surprisingly detailed introduction to how your brain works on a biological level. And I found that very interesting, but also for a certain subset of you out there, the scientific explanation of how exercise affects the way that you learn and can improve your overall brain health can be a powerful motivator to get into the habit of exercising more often. And I know from experience that as a student or when you're just busy in general, it can be really tempting to put off exercising in lieu of giving yourself more time to get your work done. But just like Cal Newport talks about in Deep Work, the intensity of your focus times the time you put in equals your productivity. And when you don't exercise, you're robbing your brain's ability to focus intensely and work efficiently at all. Book 5.5, Anime Club because there can be no higher aspiration for a student than to run their own anime club. Very serious recommendation right there. <laughs> All right, so the sixth book on my list is The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey. And this book is my favorite general introduction to the concept of productivity. Now, when most people think of productivity, they think of time management. But in this book, Chris is very careful to stress that not all hours are created equal and productivity is the product of your time, attention, and energy. So to that end, the book goes through a ton of different productivity topics, including procrastination, how to focus on your tasks without getting distracted, how to avoid multitasking, how to batch tasks, plan your day intelligently, and gets into things like meditation. 
I also like how every chapter ends with a challenge, so if you want to start putting things into action, he gives you a lot of direction to do so. The seventh book on my list is The Happiness Equation by Neil Pasricha. And I put this book on my list because a lot of us aren't actually very good at knowing what's going to make us truly happy when we're planning out our career goals or other life goals. We might look at what society seems to value, or we might trick ourselves in different ways, but as Neil's research points out in this book, a lot of people who are rich or in positions of power, executives of big companies, they're not actually happy. Now, this book goes through a lot of different things and there's a lot to think about, but one of the biggest lessons that I took away personally from this book is that milestones don't actually make us happy. And this is something that I've had to deal with quite a bit in my life. I mean, if you look right down there at that subscriber count, that's something that I use as sort of a marker for my success in my YouTube career. But I remember the day when I hit 100,000 subscribers, it didn't feel any different. The bar just kind of moved to a million and it didn't make me any happier. So I realized that happiness actually comes from the fulfillment in the work itself, not in the external rewards. And when you can internalize that and accept it, you're going to be a lot happier on a day to day basis. All right, so we are now to book number eight in the list. And that book is Steal the Show by Michael Port, which is a book all about communication. Now, a lot of this book deals with how to give a great speech, how to prepare for it, how to master your body language, how to get an ovation from the audience at the end, but it also deals a lot with interpersonal communication, networking, job interviews, negotiation tactics. And for that reason, I think it's a great all around communication skills book that you should read. Book number nine is Your Money, The Missing Manual by J.D. Roth, which is a great introduction to personal finance. Now, there are a ton of personal finance books out there, and I actually run a personal finance podcast myself, so I can't tell you that this is the best introduction to personal finance in the world, but it's the one that I read and I found it very helpful for learning how to manage my money, how to pay off my debt faster, and how to start investing smartly. And that brings us to my final pick on this list, my ultimate book recommendation for you, which is not actually any specific book at all. At this point in the video, I want to encourage you to go out and indulge your interests. Productivity for productivity's sake is useless. So you need to be able to do something with all these personal development tips that you're learning from all these books I'm recommending you. The problem is a lot of people who get interested in self-development, in productivity, they go too narrow. They stick to the recommended lists by online gurus and they never actually branch out and become experts in something unique. So if you have an interest, indulge it. Go read a book about the history of the Telegraph and at the next party you're at, you'll be able to tell a cool story that nobody else will know. So hopefully you're not too disappointed that I only really had nine books on the list, but I did think it was important to mention that at the end. And I'm gonna have links to all those books down in the description below, so definitely check them out. And on that note of indulging your interests and going and learning new and unique things, I wanna recommend a channel that I really liked you guys, and that channel is Wisecrack. Now there are a lot of education channels on YouTube, but Wisecrack is one of my favorites for the way that they seamlessly blend nerd culture and education. They do it in a lot of different ways with a lot of different series, including the Philosophy Up series, which takes anime and movies and video games, TV shows, and it looks at the philosophy that underpins their stories. So I'm gonna put one of my favorite recent videos from that series right there, The Philosophy of One Punch Man, along with their Thug Notes analysis of my absolute favorite book of all time, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, right there. Definitely check those out and go give them a subscription if you like their channel. And thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Give it a like if you did, and I will see you next week.